So Pingaksha, tell us your process for applying for your master's degree and PhD here in America. Yeah, so there are two stages. So first is master's and the second is PhD. For master's, I applied as usual, just like any other person's apply. So I wrote my GRE, I wrote my TOEFL, and then I applied to multiple colleges. But one thing which I kept in my kept in mind while applying for master's was that I knew that I want to do uh, MS with research means MS with thesis option. And I kind of knew my specialization which will be like digital electronics and vlsi so i only selected those uh, universities where which have very nice courses for digital vlsi and fpga in particular and for phd actually uh, like i did not apply to any other colleges so in my masters i did my ms thesis under dr dinesh bhatia and i was very comfortable with him and he was also comfortable with me that's why i just approached him and just for formality i applied to uh, utd by writing a sop and then recommendation letter and my gre and tofel scores were valid at that time because it was less than five years so that's how i applied for my ms and phd fantastic and i know when you get into these higher levels of education you need an advisor so what tip do you have for selecting an advisor? So it varies from person to person. Like many people comes from different background. Some people work in industry in India and then they come here. So for me, like I was a fresher. So I came to US right after my uh, bachelor. So like without much time. So what I did in order to select my advisor was I did my undergraduate thesis on a topic called FPGA. So it's a special kind of chip which you can reprogram during runtime like uh, generally like chips like intel processors or nvidia they have fixed architecture fpga you can change the architecture in runtime so i want my i did my undergrad thesis in fpga so i knew that this is the topic i want to continue my research on and then i applied accordingly and in utd dr dinesh patia was one of the renowned professors who has done a lot of research in fpga and that's how i selected him there were a couple of other professors also but uh, dr bhatia was my first choice and i mentioned about him in my sop and my application as well because he has done a lot of works in fpg and in special fields or getting a top advisor can be difficult so what did you have to do to convince and what tips do you have for convincing to take you on as a research student Oh my God, that convincing was very difficult. Like uh, when I was in my master's, uh, generally like professors, they are quite busy with PhD students. They have like four or five PhD students and then they have to teach and then they have some other courses, uh, administrative work as well. So for me, it took a great deal to convince him. I approached him in my first semester. He did not take second semester. He did not take. And then in my third semester, he asked me to take one of his courses and then get a good grade on his course. So I took his course in my third semester and then seeing my performance in his course, he asked me to join his lab in my fourth semester, which was in, I think, in uh, spring of 2014. Basically, I have to prove my work by taking his course and by doing good projects and getting a good grade in the course. So that's how I convinced him. So yeah, and then I have to wait quite a long week outside his room to approach him. So yeah, and then basically by taking his course and then doing great in the, his course. Having that track record, and performing well earlier on definitely opens the door for future opportunities and i'm yes. so glad that it worked out yes <laughs> definitely <laughs> hey friends welcome to chine coaching i'm rob at chine coaching we're all about helping you be successful in your cross-cultural journey especially with study abroad higher education we've helped guide thousands of students in this specific video we're talking about ms phd with more of a research and thesis focus uh, compared just to go for industry job. So we're learning from Pingaksha, who's done an MS and PhD sharing his incredible journey, how you can consider this option. So Pingaksha, please introduce yourself. 
Hi, I am Pingaksha. I have uh, done my master's thesis, uh, MS in electrical engineering with thesis uh, and PhD from UT Dallas. So my research focus, research focus during both my PhD as well as master's as well as in bachelor's were FPGA, which is like field programmable get array. So in layman's term, whenever we use a chip like the Intel Geon processor or the AMD Ryzen or or any NVIDIA chips, GPUs, they have fixed architectures. So, but my research is that I use that chip where you can change the architecture in runtime. So that is my research topic. And after graduation, after my master's, I worked one year full time as a uh, software design engineer in Xilinx. And then during my PhD, I interned in top companies like NVIDIA and Synopsys. And now I am currently working as a senior software engineer in Lattice Semiconductor, which is also a very good FPGA company here in San Jose, California. And Pingaksha, where is home for you? Yeah, so I am from Assam in India. So I was born and brought up in Assam. So it's a state in eastern part of eastern part of India. But for me, if somebody asks where is your home, my home and heart is always in Dallas because in I because I stayed in Dallas for eight years and I really mm -hmm. miss Dallas. So yeah. yeah. But Assam has the best tea for the chai. So Yes, yes. Assam <laughs> is the best tea. Exactly. Assam yeah. is known for its tea. It's a beautiful place. Yes, lot of greenery and lot of tea gardens and national parks are there. So it's really amazing. All right. So let's jump back in here. The next question, Pingaksha, is how do you come up with a research idea or topic for your MS or PhD thesis? MS and PhD is like completely different. Like you can say that MS is like a micro PhD. So for my MS thesis, so I came to UTD in I think fall 13. So I did uh, I will not say summer internship. I did a summer project in Dr. Bhatia's lab and with a PhD student. His name is Giris. So we tried some topic called partial reconfiguration. So during that time, I faced one particular. Right? Initially, I thought I will do something else. Like I want to do some gesture recognition or some application on partial reconfiguration. But as I start the topic, I found some like very acute detail, a very minor a, a, a very acute problem inside that big topic so which is floor planning so while doing that uh, bigger project i found a minor project which is kind of challenging and that is the topic i want to solve and i discussed with my professor dr bhatti and the uh, phd student giris so we come up came up with a uh, topic and i tried to solve it and that's how i came up with my ms thesis idea and uh, PhD is a totally different ball game. So PhD is like five or six MS thesis together. So oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> because in MS thesis, I have to do only one project and it consists of, uh, along with the introduction and conclusion, it consists of like one chapter, introduction, uh, some uh, like background study, my work and conclusion. But PhD consists of five or six uh, related uh, research topics. So for PhD, like I had to change my topic in my first semester, uh, first year, like initially I start with hardware accelerator on FPGA, which I did not like. So after discussion with my professor, so I changed the topic to something else, which is also like AI on FPGA only. And then like we, so as we keep on doing the project research, I found some small, small problems in the bigger topic. So it's small problem becomes one chapter of my PhD thesis but overall the theme is same so it's like hardware implementation of you know neural network or AI architecture on uh, FPGA and inside there there are very problem lot of four or five different sub problems were there so I had to discuss with my professor and some of my lab mates and then together we came up with my, with the thesis idea and my professor really helped me a lot in selecting the subtopics and the research topics for each chapter so yeah. it sounds like a big process and also a team effort 
Yes, exactly. You can't do a PhD alone. You need to have like <laughs> a nice, you know, group professor as well as lab mates and uh, juniors, seniors, everyone. If you want to get admitted into outstanding universities abroad, then you need to check out the Collegiate Mentorship Program. This unique college prep program has everything you need to get into your dream college. You will receive one-on-one -on -one mentorship from top university professors, lecturers, and researchers specifically in your field and industry of interest. You will expand and apply your knowledge on academic subjects in ways not possible within your current school courses. You will also get access to over 125 professors and researchers from top universities in the US and UK like Harvard, MIT, Columbia, Cambridge, Oxford, Duke University, UC Berkeley, and many more. Connect with the Collegiate Mentorship Program to get the learning, research, and internship opportunities needed to earn admissions into the world's elite universities. Now let's flip it a little bit. Ngaksha, what was maybe the biggest struggles you faced doing your PhD here in America? Yeah, so the biggest struggle which I faced during PhD is like, whether it's PhD thesis or your master thesis, you have mostly in PhD, you have to you have to do something different like you have to come up with some research or come up with a method or a algorithm which nobody has done before so i tried a couple of algorithm and couple of implementation on hardware and then i came to know that some other groups were already doing like they are doing parallelly or they might have finished the project six months before or eight months before me so i have to scrap the project and then i have to start something again from the scratch so coming up with a totally new topic this is kind of challenging and then when you do something which nobody has done before your advisor also does not know because he's your advisor if he knows then uh, i mean there is no point so coming up totally uh, something totally new and like which nobody has done before that is one of the greatest challenge and another major challenge which i faced during my phd was the rejection of papers like in phd mm -hmm. we have to submit papers so i have like six or seven papers but each of the papers were rejected at least three or four times so once i mm -hmm. submit the paper if the paper gets rejected we i me along with my professors and other co-author we always get this hurt and so coming up with a new idea which nobody has done before and dealing with the rejection of the papers and work uh, working late night in the labs are kind of mm -hmm. challenges which i faced during phd wow that that are some struggles and hard work, but uh, hopefully it paid off well for you guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, uh, if this has been a helpful video so far, hit that like button to say thanks to Pingaksha uh, for sharing his journey. We've got a few more great points to cover as well. And our chai question for you guys is what other questions do you have about PhD, research, thesis here in America? Let us know in the comments any other questions you guys have what you guys are thinking of doing, what topics you're considering. Uh, we'd love to see those in the comments. Next big question, Pinguksha, is deciding between whether to go for an industry job or PhD. So what was your decision like and how can people decide whether to go for job or PhD after master's? It's kind of a very personal decision. Like for me, I knew from my undergrad days that I will do PhD. Like I had to do one year job because my professor did not have funding at that time. Uh, so for me, I knew I was very much interested in research. And then when I did my MS thesis, my MS thesis resulted out in a research paper in a top conference that name of the conference is called FPJ with very low acceptance rate, like I think 20% or so. So it boosted my confidence. So mm -hmm. since I knew from before that I wanted to do PhD, uh, I wanted to do research. That's why I joined PhD and some people they for some others some, like it's not mandatory to do research in my bets. We had around like fall 13 to 15 bets. We have, I think, 170 or 200 electrical engineering students so out of those 200 hardly like 
10 less than 10 people did ms thesis and out of those 10 maybe three or four did phd and rest everyone did job and they are doing great in life so it's like totally personal decision since i was like very much interested in research that's why i chose the ms thesis and the phd path which is kind of challenging as compared to job <laughs> definitely now i know also you've you did some internships, you know, you, you did some work after your master's before coming back to PhD. So what kind of made you leave a really good high paying job to go back to do PhD after master's and want to study even more? I was really interested in research. So I got the job in Jailing. Like I liked the experience and it boosted my confidence and give, gave me some real world experience. So I joined the uh, job because like as I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I was a fresher. I did not have any industry experience during uh, after my undergrad neither. I did any internship during my, you know, uh, master's. So in order to get some hands on how the industry work and uh, uh, how can I apply whatever I learned in my bachelor's and master's in real world, in order to get those experience, I joined uh, the Jilinx for a year. And then I was kind of sure that uh, I want to do PhD and during fall 17, Dr. Bhatia had couple of fundings, like a couple of openings for PhD students. So uh, he contacted me and I contacted him and we mutually decided that I will go back to PhD because I really wanted to finish my PhDs and as I was interested in research. So yeah. That's great. Uh, all that hard work, masters, PhD. So thinking of the future, you know, after completing a PhD, what kind of career um, path are you looking for for your future? Currently, I am working as a R&D software engineer in Lattice Semiconductor. So, uh, so this job is, you can say, like an extension of my PhD. I mean, like, but it pays more, like, <laughs> whatever I get in UDD, it pays much more than there. But here also, I am doing, like, independent research. Here, my job involves, like, coming up with new algorithm. So they have a software called uh, lattice radian software which is used to program fpga so here i have to come up with new ideas and new research topic in order to optimize that software so that the software performs faster it runs faster and then they do not have ai in the software currently so the main, most important work here in my current job is i my phd was on ai uh, application of machine learning on fpga so here also, I'm trying to apply machine learning to optimize their Radiant software and run it on hardware. So it's quite related to whatever I have done during my PhD. So yeah, career after PhD is concerned. I chose industry, but many of my friends in UTD and other colleges as well, they chose to join academia. A couple of them joined postdoc in great colleges like Stanford and I think UCSD or something and a couple of other guys directly got tenure track professors professor jobs in some state universities so these are the two career options either you can join academia postdoc or tenure track professor or you can join industry as a research engineer or research scientist fantastic so, yeah <laughs> and friends if you want to learn more about electrical engineering here in america we're actually making another video with pingaksha talking about electrical engineering, the degrees, the job scope, the curriculum to see if this is a good fit for you and what America has to offer. So we'll have the link for that. Check that out um, to learn more about electrical engineering. Also, don't forget to connect with the Collegiate Mentorship Program to get the tools and mentorship for studying abroad at your dream university. We'll have links in the video description and comments. Ignaksha, thank you so much. Uh, this was fascinating. I learned a ton and thank you for sharing your journey and experience. Yeah, thank you to you as well. It's really an honor for me to feature in your channel. So your channel inspired me a lot. Like I learned about the application process and immigration process and also it really helped me. So friends, if you have any immigration question or if you want to know anything about the lifestyle in US, so Rob is the guy, please visit his channel mm -hmm. and check out his videos. Oh, thank you so much. It's so fun to 
hear how it helped you and now you're giving back and helping the community. And so yeah. friends, be sure to connect with us online, on social media, be subscribed to the Chai and Coaching e-newsletter. We love having you be part of the Chai and Coaching community. Um, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.